We're about halfway through War Cry Blood Hunt. We've uncovered some amazing stuff so far, but one thing that they kind of left up to the imagination is the bases. We're not gonna take these amazing minis and put them on a plane base. Had a lot of trial and error on this one. In the end, I absolutely love the way that they turned out. Almost done with the entire war band. So we're gonna see how to make water tile bases, make our own texture paste, and kind of match the paint scheme of the mat that it came with. So sit back, make up some popcorn, grab a paintbrush, see what you can do yourself. I'd love to see what everybody else did. First, we're starting off with the soul blight side of this. And this is a great opportunity to just add some little details on these guys. They're pretty clean, uh, pretty straightforward and like Zen monk. So here I'm starting off with some green stuff and I'm making like river rocks. And I'm just kind of pressing it, giving it a good seal down onto the base here. And as I work my way around, I'm also starting to create a layered effect. So a lot of the rocks that you'll see along the river is there'll either be a stack of them or the rocks themselves will have layers to it. So I'll cut into the side of this to kind of give it a tiered dimension to it, you know, almost like a slate. And then you'll see constantly throughout this, I'll size up the mini on it, see how it's fitting. Uh, that's pretty important to keep on doing. The last thing you want to do is finish the whole thing, do sculpting you're really proud of, and then find out that the mini just straight up can't fit on it. So just keep up the work. Do little bit by little bit. That's the biggest thing I've learned uh, is to really just take it real small bits at a time. Just keep on adding in small layers here and there. Another big thing I've learned on this is to keep your tool wet, whether it's your hand when you're kneading it or whether it's the tool when you're starting to sculpt it. I just use water. I've seen a fair amount of people use Vaseline. I haven't tried that yet. Can't speak to it. Water works just fine. So just continue working my way, creating the layers on different parts, kind of scraping back some of the excess, flattening down and smoothing out, and continuing to give the mini a try. Try them out in different positions. Find something to work out better. Really go through all the different spots that you can. He's standing pretty good there. I'm going to totally forget that when I go to put him on and put him in the wrong location, but that's just how things go. Now as for the painting, I'm not gonna get into the specific details of what paint I'm using because there's just a lot of trial and error like I was saying on this one. This is just a light gray, give it a good base coat. I tend to start most of my rocks with a light gray or some variation of that. So just go through, give a smooth coat to everything. Now that that's dried, I'm just taking some different oranges. All rocks have a variety of color. And now here I'm taking a mix of like a brighter, deeper orange. That one was a lot runnier. And while that one's still wet, I took a magenta, worked that one in there. And let all that dry and then move on to the next step. Needed some brown. It honestly looks terrible at this point, but that's completely fine. You're just getting in the underlying colors. So I took like a light, this I believe is a camo brown, which is a greenish brown. Works really good for a lot of different uh, aspects. And this here just added a little bit more color into it as it brought the rock back down to a natural toned color. And it kind of balanced out a lot of those oranges that we had in there, made a good undercoat. Let's move on to the next step of it. I'm going to take a really light brown, like the ash brown that I've been using in a lot of the stuff on this, and give it a very heavy overbrush. And now work on to the dry brushing. I'm taking a gray, just a light gray on this one, lighter, whiter than before and giving it a mix of like a dry brush and an overbrush over everything. And I'm really not happy with the way that this is turning out, so I break to my old standard. I take that blue wash and I cover the entire rock with it. I really like the way that this turns out. I was kind of trying to not use it on this one, but I really wasn't getting the colors that I wanted to. That's all right. This entire thing was a trial and error. Almost all my paint videos are trial and error. Now that that's all set, and give a tan dry brushing over all the rocks. And at the end, I think it really came together. You had a lot of life in those rocks, a lot of colors, variations, and it really popped out in the end. Thought it worked pretty cool against all the play mat. Now here's a cool trick that I like to do with the resin when I'm doing water effects, as I just recently started doing this, is I let it sit overnight. And what that does is it thickens it up enough to where I can do with these, I don't have to use a mold, I don't have to use any barriers, I could just use the stir stick that I had 
and kind of work it in all over the place. And it's thick enough at this point where it's going to be fluid and still move when it needs to move, but it's not going to spill over the edges. Here's where I take some sylvaneth bits. Uh, this is just cut off from one of my Kurnoth Hunters. You have tons of extra bits from those. Just break them off, put them all over this. Really have just these thorny wildlife breaking out throughout all the different ones. Here's back to the original base. I use this one to look almost like reeds coming up out of the water. Just hit different colors on them, really play around. You know, it's sylvaneth little bits. Have your let your imagination run wild. Some greens, some oranges, some browns, depends on the tone that you're going for. Obviously, if you're going for a more dead area, you're not going to go for that. But this here, again, more zen-like, more monkish. Now we're going to move over to the corn. There's some cool stuff that I'm going to try in here, at least in my head it was sounding pretty cool. I had a bunch of this cork laid out for another project that I had layered up together to make kind of like tiles. That didn't work out. That was a long time ago. So, broke off little bits, kind of created rock formations, and here I made my own texture paste. And honestly, all this is, is some drywall filler, some PVA glue, and then some mixed aggregate, like a general purpose construction gravel. Just kept on working it till it was a consistency I liked. This one here was a little bit too runny, but it was working out pretty good. So I didn't want a lot of those real sharp edges all over the place. So kind of filling that out, smoothing it in, especially when I had the flat sides, blending that in. But one thing I wanted to do is I did want to keep some of the cork sticking out. So I still had some jagged rocks hanging out there. And the rest of this is going to get painted up to match kind of the Heart of Gur mats that they have in all the different Warcry sets. It's a little bit runny. It's going to keep on moving on. I come back every hour or so and touch it up, clean up the bits that are running off, and kind of try to smooth it over. But really for the first time trying out texture paste, I was pretty happy with this. I got a couple ideas to try for once down the road. But this one here worked out great and extremely cheap. Now that all of them are about done, this is corn and you can't do corn without skulls for the skull throne. So I'll break into the old bits box again. Bits box again. Cut up some a little skull bits. I cut the backs off of all the skulls, and this allows it to sit a little bit more flush. I'm doing this when the texture paste that I made is still kind of in the middle phase, so I probably could press them in there and get them to stick, but I'm still super gluing it to be safe. Here we all primed up. Coming back in with a muddy brown. Again, I'm not going over color specific in this one. I'm not listing all of them out, because this was just a lot of shooting at it and seeing how it goes. Here I'm taking an orange, kind of like I used on the rocks on the Soblite, and I'm stippling that in a yellow in to just kind of make irregular patterns going across it. When you look at the Heart of Gerb map, it's got a lot of this breaking off across the entire map. I love it. I wanted to bring that into there. This is a pretty standard I do on rocks. This is intermittent blue. I've used it a handful of times in other videos because I absolutely love this color. So that's one of the ones I'm going to call out specific. And this is like a living land, the land of beasts where the land comes alive. So I gotta take a flesh tone and work that into a little bit, a little bit of a flesh tone wash. It works out really good with dirt and rock, but in my thought process, it gave it a little bit of living feel. One of the last steps I'm gonna do is just take a black wash, work it in all over, let it mix in a little bit with the flesh tone wash and bring it in between all the different skulls, all the different fiddly bits that we put all over this. I did notice towards the end that some of the skulls blended in a little bit too much, the darker tone ones, so took a little bit of that. Um, I'm not going to get color specific. I took a little bit of a bone color and I worked it in there a little bit more, made it just pop around the, the high ridges. Really liked how that was coming out. And an overview of the whole thing. A lot of trial on this, and I really love the way that all this came out. I'm going to try doing this for a couple more models. And you throw in, of course, the blood for the blood god. Um, you know, technical paint, because it's corn. If you don't have blood on it, are you even doing corn justice? The answer is no. Hey, you made it to the end. Thank you.
<laughs> if you made it this far, I can't thank you enough because it really does help out over everything. I, one final look at some of the, the bases that we did. You know, I threw in some like, it just bits from all the different kits that had flesh eater quartz. Uh, this is left over from Nagash's back piece that I just decided not to use. I didn't like the way it looked on Nagash. It worked way better on this. Uh, there's even some of it on, oh, I can't show you that model yet. That's for later. But anyway, if you're here now, please swing on over to the old uh, Tic Tackers. Follow me on there at abuchananas underscore nomeo dilbo. And then shoot on over to Instagram where it's abuchananas underscore tabletop. Like, follow, subscribe. Or, or just don't. Keep watching the videos. Works too. All right. <laughs> Next time we're going to finish up the Warcry set. And that'll well, actually probably be the last video for Warcry in quite a while. We'll move on to the next topic. If any has something that they want to see, just shoot it. I'll see if I got something in line for it. There's corn coming out. Should be soul blight coming out. There's a lot of stuff I can do for it. So, hey, keep on checking back. Thank you.